when you announce that okay you know what you're going to take a break and you want to start a family everyone starts the first thought that comes is okay she's done India's most successful squash player in the prime of her career and the system's apathy didn't spare her either you know there are a lot of sponsors who are, who don't sponsor who who've not sponsored me after having the kids a lot of people said she's not going to come back she's put a husband in before her career she's put a family before her career a time any woman should enjoy and celebrate in her life was reduced to questions asked and judgments passed on Deepika Palikal Kartik's decision to become a mother and even as she dealt with all the noise on the outside there was her own personal battles that she silently dealt with for many years i did start trying in 2018 but you know it 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 wasn't as easy as uh it wasn't as easy for me to get pregnant so obviously i had to go through a lot of fertility treatments to get where i am today and get the kids and right there glaring at us is the shame india sports ecosystem should face for having failed almost every female athlete who ever wished to have a child has had a child or could not have a child because in india you made to choose motherhood or marriage Deepika Palikal Kartik and her husband Dinesh Kartik welcomed twins in October of 2021 The announcement they made on social media shared with us the joy of their growing family, the names of their newborns, but didn't speak of the struggles they faced to get to this day. In the months that followed, Deepika made an extremely successful comeback to squash, winning two doubles world championship golds in April and a mixed doubles bronze at the 2022 Commonwealth Games. The entire country joined in celebrating her wins, her medals, a stark contrast from just a year back. but the system had all but forgotten her i i know for a fact that a lot of people ruled me out after wanting to start you know start a family having just a thing where you say you know what it's okay it's okay to go and have kids it's okay to start a family there's nothing wrong with it and then after 9 9 months you come back and we'll still help you or we'll still support you through these 9 months right i think that will go a long way in not allowing but i feel the decisions that women make the athletes that make in the country might be a little bit more easier if women athlete can get some security from sponsors from uh, federations from the leagues that they're playing from the clubs that they're playing with it will go a long way in just giving us that support that you know what it's okay it there's nothing wrong in going and starting a family and coming back and i think as i said it's not spoken a lot because the first thing you associate when someone says you know what i want to start a family i'm taking a break is that she's done she's putting her family ahead of her sport and it's done i think that's a taboo that has to be broken with no single sports federation in the country having a provision of maternity leave there is currently no standard guidelines for any female athlete in india who wishes to embrace motherhood As Deepika said, the journey back is tough, but even tougher is the decision to step away itself. If the system and its sponsors could abandon India's most successful squash player in her prime, what precedent does it set for young women who wish to walk on the same path someday? You know when you're at your peak or when you're at that age where you know that you have maybe at least 6 to 7 years left in your career, it's a very hard decision to make. What what really helped in a way for me to take that decision was that um i had a husband who could uh who could financially support both of both of us and i cannot imagine what other athletes go through when they you know not in this privileged spot spot is that i am but i feel like the route to get back to being part of the team or part of leagues or part of any uh any tournaments can be made easier you know uh with where i i'm coming from and where i was i have to say that the federation has been extremely extremely supportive of my decision to come back it was just me going to the federation and saying you know i still want to play for the country and give me a road map to how i 
can make it back to the, to the Indian team. And it was very black and white. And I think with I know with a lot of federations that doesn't happen. And I feel like this this the route to come back for women in the country who want to have kids can be a lot more easier and a lot more transparent. So they tell you that you're done. They tell you what a mistake you're making. But the men who govern sports in India in all their decades in power will not once tell you that you have their support. To stand up to that apathy and still move forward has been a rare story in Indian sport, one taken forward by Deepika. But this was not the only fight she had to face. For three years after deciding to have a child, Deepika fought another battle that millions in this country are silently fighting every single day. 15% of couples trying to conceive struggle with infertility, but the taboo around the world is what Deepika now hopes to help break. And just like she stood her ground and single-handedly forced the Squash Federation back in 2016 to provide equal prize money for male and female players at the Nationals, Deepika opened up about her struggles with infertility in the hope of giving a voice to a topic that should not be mentioned in hushed tones to a battle that should not be fought alone. It's definitely not spoken of, I think, uh, in terms of fertility, in terms of miscarriages, in terms of struggling to have a kid, in terms of, uh, you know, wanting to take take that break at a, at a young age and then wanting to come back or putting it on hold till till your career is done. I think it's all personal choices at the end of the day, right? Having said that, yes, I think fertility with, you know, with women in the country is not obviously talked up, talked upon a lot. Um, yes, as you said, I did start trying in 2018, but you know, it, it, it wasn't as easy as, uh, it wasn't as easy for me to get pregnant. So obviously I had to go through a lot of fertility treatments to get where I am today and get the kids. But it's for me i feel like i'm not i it's not something that i want to talk about and it's not something that i don't want to talk about right it's 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 not like i'm hiding anything it's just that it's it comes from a very um vulnerable place in my life and you know a lot of women who don't want to talk about it but it's okay if you don't want to talk about it but at the end of the day i think we all, we all have to be put into positions and conversations where we're comfortable in talking about it. And I know that a lot of women go through it. I know that it's not been easy because I've been through it and it's definitely not been easy to come out on the right side of it. Not every woman will come out on the right side. Not every woman will even have the strength to start on a motherhood journey. Not every woman will have the support to stand up to the system. But why should they have to fight for what is naturally and rightfully theirs? Why has the system failed the Indian woman here as well? Why should an athlete have to choose motherhood or medals? Continue watching this special series as we bring you more stories of female athletes who have been forced to make this choice. Some have found their way back, some the system has lost forever.